Welcome to Scam Squad, combined with your moment of trust this week. Today, we're combining Scam Squad and your moment of trust. If you're a regular listener, you know that each week, Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson shares the latest scams on our radio segment and podcast, Scam Squad. This is followed by your moment of trust with Richard Copeland, President of BBB of the Tri-Counties, who shares timely information from both businesses and consumers. Often the valuable information from your moment of trust and Scam Squad cover similar topics. So today, I thought that they could each interview each other so that they can enhance their synergistic efforts to protect the community at large. So welcome to you both. Vicki, you want to start with some questions for Richard? Richard and I have worked together in the past, so it's always nice to connect. And Richard, I know that the Better Business Bureau has a service that they call Scam Tracker. Could you please uh, talk about that, explain what that is, and explain how people can use it? Yeah, I'd be happy to. And it's always great seeing you again, Vicki, too. Um, um, so, yeah, and actually, we just rolled out, uh, just rebuilt Scam Tracker with the help of uh, Capital One and um, Amazon. Uh, they, they got behind it, they believe in it, helped to fund the reconstruction of it. Find it. And what you do is you can search for scams that are being reported by your neighbors, which is always useful. Um, but maybe even more importantly, you can report scams that you've fallen victim of there and on that site. And we kind of coalesce all of the data on a not even national basis, but in Canada as well. And we work with uh, law enforcement and government agencies quite often uh, when we see trends of things, you know, like, as you know, we've contacted the Santa Barbara County District Attorney's Office many times and worked with them on several cases over the years. And a lot of times those uh, originate from Scam Tracker. So, you know, I just think it's a great resource. It's a cool little website to pop on every now and again and just you know, uh, an educated consumer is a is is a, a consumer that's going to do well or better than someone who is not. Absolutely, education is the best protection, especially against these scams that are targeting our population. So, when we report on scams here on Scam Squad, uh, or have victims telling their stories about being scammed, would you suggest that they also report these scams on Scam Tracker? Absolutely. I mean, knowledge is power. And the more information we can gather and spread that knowledge out, the better. And I should say too, take a second to differentiate between a scam and a complaint. You know, we handle, well, my office handles complaints on regarding companies located in the tri-counties, but uh, you can go to bbb.org and file a complaint. And complaints are things where like, you know, that are interactions with real companies and, and a complaint is something also where you want something in return, like your money back or a discount or whatever it might mm -hmm. be, as opposed to a scam, which is more, those are more things. And we can differentiate for consumers too. If they're not sure which one it is, just report it either as a complaint or a scam and we'll figure it out. But scams are more, seems like they do deal with more nefarious uh, perpetrators, you know, often right. not yeah. local, often not even in the United States. And we do still work with, uh, by the way, I see three, you know, which is an FB, FBI, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Internet Crimes com uh, Commission. So we can refer things to them as well. Well, I'm glad you made that distinction, Richard. That's an important distinction to make. And I know that the uh, BBB does get a lot of complaints about various businesses and their activities or maybe false advertising associated with a particular product. And I'm wondering, does the BBB do investigations of these complaints? Yeah, we do. Um, we, well, not, I mean, every complaint is somewhat of an investigation, I suppose, mm -hmm. because when someone files a complaint, we always send it to the company for their response, um, whether they're a member of the Better Business Bureau or not, it makes no difference. Um, but really investigations, you know, the staff will notify me that, hey, you know, this looks kind of funny. And we get a lot of, 
a lot of cases where a, a company will get multiple complaints with the, containing the same complaint allegations, and that will spark an investigation. And it, honestly, I, I've been doing this, my wife and I, Carol, for a long time. And one of the more, um, one of our favorite parts of this or more rewarding parts of this <clears throat> job are, is doing these investigations. And for example, we just had one come up where people were, well, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but it, it wound up, uh, it looks like this scam is being perpetrated by someone who's been um, censured by the Federal Trade Commission already in the past. And I mean, here like 10, 15 years later, this person resurfaces, runs a, running another, pretty, to me, pretty obvious scam. And when I notified Federal Trade Commission, they're like, oh, great. You know, so I, I'm then able to turn over, turn over all the information I gathered as well as our complaint information. You know, again, I don't want to ramble on too much, but that's why another reason why consumers should always file a complaint or put something on Scam Tracker because, you know, BBB cannot, we're not law enforcement or government agency, but we have friends like you, Vicky, who are. <laughs> And and in the in the federal uh, agencies as well, but they often use our complaint data as they build their case. You know, right. so it's always worth reporting it, no matter how guilty you might feel. How could I do something so stupid? Yeah. Hey, we all do it. Yes. You know, it happens to the best of them. So true. Um, so people really need to uh, report something, and then if it's a, a, um, appropriate, we will launch an investigation and report the results of our investigations as well. You know, Richard, sometimes it seems there must be a fine line between those complaints and scams. Just recently, I had a car that was older but didn't have any miles on it, and I took it to four different mechanics, four different, totally different opinions. One said this part needed replaced and the other person looked at it and go, no, that's perfectly fine. Why would he have told you that? And it was just, it was crazy. Yeah, I know. And, and you know, I've always heard a lot. You always have to take a lot of that with somewhat of a grain of salt because, mm -hmm. you know, the easiest thing to do to win a new customer is say, hey, that other person was charging it too much. I'll do it for sure. this. You know? mm -hmm. But it was completely <laughs> different parts. So they yeah, uh, found well. different things that they said were wrong with it. And, and I really I am very suspicious now. I know you always want to get, you know, multiple opinions and all that, but it's hard when mm -hmm. it's your car. I mean, yeah. what are you going to do? You know, it's, that's why I say the internet, even, even though it's got its uh, downfall, certainly it's, it's got some great advantages. And right. one of them is you just Google, you know, people before you take your, your uh, right. vehicle in. And we found that if they have a BBB report, you know, we've been around since 1912, we've been in the Tri-County since 1945, but, and we have a lot of user generated content in our information, you know, complaints and things. So if you Google before you take your car to someone, oftentimes the BBB listing will be very high in the results because of the domain authority or length of time and all that. So, so that, that's the best, uh, again, like we said earlier, knowledge is power and know where you're going before you go. So Richard, what are some other things that might happen to a business if the BBB investigates and finds nefarious activity? <laughs> well, we say? The, yeah, as, as a, at a minimum, I mean, if we find something, and often it ties back to advertising, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's often where it begins. But if we find, well, we'll report um, our findings of our investigation, if they're of impact in, in our reports. And believe it or not, in each of the last three years now, consumers have viewed over a million each year of our reports just on tri-county companies, a million. I mean, yeah. it's through the internet, That's you know, yeah. but the, the results of the investigations can all oftentimes result in an unfavorable rating, like an F rating. We rate companies from A plus to F. And I can tell you, um, even if it's kind of a borderline thing, and we always put it on the company, right? We say, we think you're doing this. Uh, please let us know within seven days if what we're thinking is wrong and why. And then we'll do it again, you know, to cover ourselves. If they don't respond, which oftentimes they don't, or they will aggressively, 
then we'll publish the results of that. And a lot of times it'll lower the rating. And then next thing you know, I'm getting a call from someone, Hey, uh, how can we clear this up? You know? And, yeah. So it can, it can result in the business remedying whatever the situation is, or I'm sure it can also kind of ruin the company's business. <laughs> That's yeah. why they get aggressive when they were, yeah. Write me back, you know, but yeah. they don't, they have a tendency of scam artists, they have a tendency to not pay much attention to the Better Business Bureau until it starts costing them money. When it hits yeah. them in the pocketbook, that's when our phone starts ringing down yeah. here. And oftentimes it's the attorney, you know, you better do this or this. And I'm like, well, whatever. <laughs> Get in so, line. Exactly. So, Richard, <laughs> I know that it means a lot when a business is BBB accredited. Can you explain how a business becomes accredited by the Better Business Bureau? Yeah, well, thanks for asking. Yeah, and again, we don't have any funding from anyone other than local legitimate businesses. And so we, we uh, contact local businesses. You know, you have a company has to be in business for at least six months before they can even apply for accreditation mm -hmm. or membership. And then they have to have the proper licensing. Um, this goes back to what I was, well, talking about earlier. We're having a time uh, determining who is the proper licensing agency for home health care businesses. That's one mm -hmm. of the things we're wrestling with. And then, uh, so company has to have a good record with us, they have to be properly licensed. And then I, I uh, have a subcommittee of our board of directors who approves all applicants and then formal accreditation uh, by the at the monthly board meetings. If we're not extremely diligent about who we allow to become accredited, uh, accreditation would be valueless. So we're right. very, very careful about that. Yeah. And then they pay, you know, I mean, it's, they pay annual dues and companies can pay us monthly or in payment plans or whatever, but we don't deal in any of that until we're pretty sure they're okay. So you have a clear vetting process that you go through with these companies. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really important. And, and how can a consumer check to see if a business is accredited by the Better Business Bureau? I know I've sometimes had phone calls from, from people who want to know about a business, and I will say, well, you know, you, you have to check uh, with the Better Business Bureau. And I've run, your, run things through your website before, but maybe you could explain the easiest way that a person could get into the website and just if they just want to check to see if a business is accredited, how should they start that process? Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks for that question. That's a good one. There's a couple of important distinctions. One is, well, bbb.org is the way to go. Okay. And believe it or not, now because of the internet, you can call us, you know, <laughs> and my, my staff is going, to, shut up. But um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't get that many calls. I mean, we, we get a lot of calls, but I mean, it used to be insane. I mean, when I started in Santa Barbara back in 96, it was, you know, what our phone was always busy, but now bbb.org, but if someone wants some personal attention, they can call us at uh, 805-963-8657. And we have live chat now also on the internet. So if someone has some questions, wondering what to do, that we have a live chat. But the best way is, is to look on uh, bbb.org. And the important distinction, the other one I wanted to make was that we have re uh, reports on all companies. Well, not every company, but we have mm -hmm. reports on companies in the tri-counties uh, who have come to our attention for whatever reason, then they're not all accredited, right? Um, so pretty much any company can be on our records. We also recently established a, a relationship with Department of Consumer Affairs and their subgroup, the Contractor State License Board, and they're, they're now piping their licensed data information to the California Better Business Bureaus which we include in our reports and we verify it weekly. So it's really kind of nice, you know, especially with the contractors, you want to yeah. stay with someone who's licensed because that means they have their bond and their insurance and all that. And we update those weekly. So we're very proud of that new relationship and we're going to uh, take full advantage of it. So just navigating the website, if you go to bbb.org, is there a, a, a place there where you can type in the name of the business accreditation name of the business and you put it in and it'll come up right right and thanks to the help of 
big corporate sponsors, they're, they're in, instituting a lot of things that make it easier, like type ahead, you know, it'll fill in, you know, and, and you can choose by category, particular name, near me or in a city or state or whatever. So it's, it's simple, but it's fairly sophisticated and it seems to be working, working well because our numbers are just going up and up and up. Wow. So is there also a way to know if there have been complaints filed against a business that uh, you have accredited or you've taken a look at? You bet. I mean, that's one of the nicest things about it. On, on, the, on the reports that we have on companies, you can see the numbers of complaints that were filed and customer reviews. And customer reviews, just like complaints, we always send them to the company to give them a chance to respond. And we wait 72 hours before we publish those. But you can go uh, on to the uh, report and if someone's complained or made a customer review, you can read verbatim what the complaint was. And in most cases, or many cases at least, you can read how the company responded. I mean, a lot of review sites, you can see uh, company responses, but with us, just about every one, you can see uh, how the company responds. Because, you know, it, not everybody gets complaints, um, yeah. especially these days. I think people are a little more uh, demanding, I guess. <laughs> So do you also do this for charities? Because I also get phone calls from people saying, you know, I don't know if it's a good charity. I'm not sure if I want to uh, give money, but they've been, they've been contacting me. What advice would you have for that person? Well, we have another uh, division of the Better Business Bureau called the Wise Giving Alliance. And they do, uh, their website is givegive.org. Mm -hmm. And people can go there and, see the list of uh, charities that have registered. Um, it's, it's really pretty good. It's been around for many, many years and it's gotten so big. They actually are now a subdivision of the Better Business Bureau, but that's a good place to check. And there's some other internet resources as well. I think GuideStar and, you know, yeah, something like well, that. Richard, this is great information. I know I've learned a lot and it's going to help me field some phone calls that I get. So, um, do you have any questions for me? Yeah. I, I, um, what about, you talk a lot at the end of Scam Squad about good news. Can you kind of elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Well, you know, we are, we're always asking people to report. Report to the FBI, report to the Federal Trade Commission, report to your local police department. And I know when I suggest to people reporting to the big agencies, the FBI, the Federal Trade Commission, what's going through their mind is, why would I bother? This is never going to result in anything. This is a huge agency. But the important thing to know, and the reason I ask people to report to those particular agencies, is that they are um, kind of a library, if you will, of information that the FBI, for example, collects. And if they can get enough information about a particular scam that is, that is originating in another country, they will actually put together a task force. It's usually a very large task force with many federal agencies involved, and they will go after these folks. They will partner with law enforcement in, let's say, India, for example. And they will get the Indian authorities to investigate the particular organization where they think uh, these internet scams are coming from. A lot of, uh, for example, romance scams might originate in India or might originate in Nigeria. And they will work with Indian law enforcement to try and locate, first of all, the places where these phone calls are being made. I mean, we're talking about huge buildings where, you know, every floor of the building scammers are making a different kind of phone call. And they will actually shut these places down. And in some instances, they will uh, allow our government to prosecute the uh, perpetrators. But I think the most common way that we find these folks is through money mules. I constantly get uh, updates from the FBI, from Federal Trade Commission, from the Department of Justice, from the FBI. I get bulletins coming in almost on a daily basis talking about usually the headline is something to do with a prosecution, a scam prosecution, or uh, a scam conviction. And 
it's often of the money mule. So they are actually able to track the person here in the United States that is conspiring with the fraudster in India to get the money from the United States to the fraudster in Nigeria or India or Jamaica or where many of these um, scams originate. And so we shut down the source of the funds. If the funds can't get to the scammers, then uh, it's going to starve their operation. So that's, to answer your question, it's very difficult because these scams do originate in other countries. Our local <laughs> law enforcement is powerless. There's no way our little Santa Barbara Police Department with its 100 plus members could possibly investigate or um, create a prosecution for a crime or the perpetrators in India. But through these federal organizations, we can locate some of the money mules and we can shut off the funding. So long-winded answer to your question, but yes, it does happen. We do find these folks, law enforcement does find these folks and, and can shut down their operations. Yeah, th thanks. That, that was good. But you know, one of the things I have to ask that really impressed me hearing about in a negative way was during our Consumer Protection Agency task force, task force meetings, and you just mentioned it as a, the romance scams. I mean, those are just oh. like, and you, you'd think there are some, I mean, what would be some common, you know, some, I mean, it seems like there'd be some obvious um, tips that a loved one, friend, relative, what, whatever is involved in one of these things. But is there anything you can share that maybe is, wouldn't be at front of mind uh, to prevent these? Well, you know, the problem is that um, these romance scams are very addictive for the people that get caught up in them. And the scammers are well-groomed. They are good, good psychologists. They know exactly what to say. And I've talked to many victims of romance scams, and the hardest thing to do is to convince them that they are being scammed. Uh -huh. They get so sucked in. So... What we realize is that education is the best prevention. And to the extent possible, Patty and I talk about romance scams quite frequently on Scam Squad. Um, I do presentations throughout the community and I always feature romance scams as one of the premier dangerous scams that I talk about. And I try and impress that on folks that you know, if you get online and you strike up a friendship with somebody, all well and good, but understand, understand that scammers are lurking on these sites. And the minute they ask for money, the second they tell you that there is a problem and they ask for money, you are dealing with the scammer, cut off all contact. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's wow. really the best advice that I can give. And I also talk to family members who are very concerned because one of their loved ones is involved with a scammer and they can't seem to intervene and convince this family member that this is a scammer that's taking all of their, their money, all their retirement money. And, um, you know, the best thing that I can say to those folks is don't be judgmental. Just start to ask pertinent yeah, questions. Yeah. Well, yes, because we do get comments sometimes on our YouTube channel. How could they fall for that? And so you can understand how people feel so foolish. And I think it is about the most heartbreaking scam because people feel so bad about themselves. Or It's just, we even had a lady, not to mention any names, that Vicki told me she did a suicide attempt after, uh, you know, one of these terrible um, romance scam. So it, it's heartbreaking for the victims. It is. And I always tell family members, be gentle, but start asking questions, especially about pieces of information that might be able to be verified. We had one instance where the scammer made a big mistake. He sent a photograph of the supposed love interest who was a woman and turned out to be a, an adult actress, adult film star, porn, porn star. And she had a whole website. Now she wasn't the scammer, but the scammer had borrowed her photograph. And um, 
made the mistake of sending it to the victim. Well, the victim sent it to his mom. See, she's a real person. The mom sent it to me. Our investigator did a Google search and found the porn star's website with this exact picture in it, took it out to the victim and said, here, here's your love interest. Here's the love of your life. <clears throat> that was the only thing, the only thing that convinced him he was dealing with a scammer. But, you know, it's just finding a little bit of information that maybe can be verified or not verified. And creating a doubt yeah isn't it funny i bet you find it too not so much with the uh, the uh, romance scams but other ones where messages that people receive are in such poor grammar yeah. right yes. i mean you would think i mean there's spell check there's all kinds of things and yet almost universally scam artists don't take advantage of them i mean they'll send these it's supposed to look like official notices but they're terribly worded out of context out of yeah. syntax crazy you'd wonder yeah. anyway i guess i think you... they're getting better though at, at correcting their spelling don't you vicky right. they've I, gotten I more do. sophisticated yes yeah, i do the ones i've seen recently i mean i've seen a couple where i've kind of looked at them and gone hmm i, I wonder if this is legitimate because yeah all the I's are dotted and the t's are crossed and the syntax is correct and the language is correct and the the stationery they've used looks very official. So I think that unfortunately scammers are getting much, much more sophisticated and knowledgeable about what works. And you do, you say you're, you're giving presentations around the community, right? Are you, yes. Uh, yes. can you expand a little bit on that? Like where you go, groups you speak to? Absolutely. We will go uh, wherever somebody wants us. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we go to the retirement communities. Um, we go to um, uh, rotary clubs, homeowners associations, we do a lot of homeowners associations, churches, any kind of organization that is interested in, in uh, having us speak, uh, we will come out and speak professional organizations. Um, yeah, any place that wants us will come out and speak and we only tell people look, we, we just ask that you have more in your audience than there are speakers. And we usually come out in pairs of two or three. So if there's three or more people, we'll talk to them. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, the only other thing I can think of, I mean, and it's kind of a tough question to ask, but we get a lot of calls from consumers and we don't, and complaints, and we don't want to, uh, we don't want to get involved in something that involves breaking the law. Mm -hmm. You know, although, I mean, technically, probably every complaint has some aspect of that. Is there any advice you can give me or to people in general? When is it appropriate to go to the DA's office as opposed to filing a consumer complaint? Well, I think the thing that people need to understand is that we don't do the initial investigation. If somebody has an issue, uh, they think that they've run across a crook or they're being... Uh, scammed or something like that, um, they're the victim of some kind of criminal activity, they need to go to local law enforcement. And local law enforcement is very good at vetting the, these kinds of complaints and deciding which ones contain some criminal conduct and, and are worthy of an investigation and which ones are not. That they need to be resolved in a different way in a civil arena. So you start with the police department or the sheriff's department when you make your initial complaint. Now, that being said, we do actually have a civil complaint department here uh, in the DA's office. And so if somebody does have an issue with a business, they can file, uh, we have a very, very short, easy to fill out form, civil complaint form. And the attorney that deals with those cases, actually, we have two attorneys that deal with those cases. We'll take a look at it and see if there's something to be done. Awesome. You know, by the way, that's something else we can include in our reports. If a law enforcement or government agency takes action against a company, you know, we'll include that in the reports that we publish out there um, as well. And it can have a negative effect on their rating, too. Absolutely. I can imagine. Yeah. But we need to work together. I, I, we, we try and watch your website, um, monitor it at least once every week or two to look for actions taken against local businesses. But it's a, 
you know, we cover three counties, so it's a little bit of a task, but kind of you have to do it, you know. You've got a big job, Richard. You've got a big <laughs> job, but you do it well. <laughs> so do you. So do you, believe Always me. a pleasure working with you. Yeah. Same yeah. here. I look I look forward to more of our uh, consumer protection uh, task force meetings. Absolutely. Well, I myself loved the show. It was so great to have you both together, the president of the BBB of the Tri-Counties, Richard Copeland, and Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. So we'll just consider this scam squad and your moment of trust rolled into one. And what a great information you both shared. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Patty. Thanks, Bye -bye Patty. Now. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We'd like to thank Ayers Automotive Repair for supporting your moment of trust. With timely advice from BBB of the Tri-Counties, Ayers Automotive Repair is a proud member of the Better Business Bureau, providing dependable, trustworthy auto repair services in Santa Barbara since 1979.